You ain't going, and that's final! Applejack snaps over her shoulder. But- No buts, Apple Bloom. You're staying home! Apple Bloom grits her teeth and follows Applejack down the dirt road. The setting sun shines in their eyes. Trees sway in the breeze, and summer apples bloom angry red from their branches. Apple Bloom looks over her shoulder at the winding path leading down to Ponyville. The train will be leaving tomorrow morning, and her friends with it. This ain't no time to go on your little adventures, Applejack drones on. Granny's- Granny gets sick all the time. Why do I have to stay just because she caught another cold? Because it's what a family does. If you want your kitty mark so badly, why don't you think about why your brother and I got our apples? I ain't you, Applejack. I don't want or care about all the same things you do. Apples don't fall far from the tree. Sometimes an apple falls down a hill and splashes into a river and is taken far, far away to a place where there ain't no apple trees. Applejack gives her a look. You obviously don't know anything about apples and trees. I know I have to explore and taste new things so I can find what's important to me. What truly matters to me. That's what a cutie mark is all about. Applejack frowns. Is that what you really want? To leave all of us behind and go live in some place none of us ain't even heard of? And what if it is? Then it's a darn good thing you're just a filly and don't get to wander off into something you'll regret. Why do you have to be so stupid? Hey, don't you talk to me about stupid young fella. If you think running off at a time like this is a good idea, your head is as empty as a fallen log. You're a log. Log? Big Mac's voice. Applejack and Applebloom glare up at him. He winces and shrinks back. Sister talk. Nothing you need concern yourself with. The big stallion chews on his straw, shrugs, and hurries past them the wheels of his cart creaking behind. See? Applejack says when he's out of earshot. Big Mac never complains. Big Mac don't even know how to complain! Nope. Big Mac shouts in the distance. Maybe you can learn a thing or two from him then. Apple Bloom steps in front of her and glares into her eyes. Will you just sign the permission paper? All I need is your signature and I can go. I ain't signing nothing for you right now, and Granny ain't in no condition to neither. Applejack walks past her. You can go beg Big Mac if you want. Big Mac can't even read! Guess you're staying home then. She shudders and looks back over her shoulder. Warm wind blows the scent of sun-baked earth at her side. When she faces forward again, the barn emerges from behind an apple tree where the road curves, standing tall and red in the open field. But she'll be fine in a day or two anyway! Apple Bloom says, struggling to keep her voice from breaking. You don't know that, Applejack says, as they start down the hill toward the barn. So you'll stay near, just like your brother and mate. She follows Applejack, until they're close enough to the barn to hear the window shades clanking against the wall. Her eyes drift to the second-story windows, where Granny Smith's room is. She is probably lying up there now, coughing and moaning and muttering like she has been the past weeks, getting worse every day. Apple Bloom's guts go cold, followed by a rising urge to throw up. She stops and takes a step back. And just where do you think you're going? Don't you- Hey, stop! She runs back the way they came, past Big Mac and his cart, over long shadows of apple trees along the winding path. Big Mac says something behind, but the wind in her ears makes it hard to hear. Applejack snaps something at him, then there is only the sound of her rushing hooves chasing after her. Applebloom's short legs carry her fast, but not nearly fast enough. She makes it past two bends in the road before Applejack catches up behind her. She grits her teeth and turns off the path and into the apple trees, but she might as well be trying to outrun a timber wolf. Apple Bloom, stop! Applejack is almost at her tail again. She passes two more trees before she sprints past her and stops in front to block her path. Apple Bloom's hooves dig into the ground to stop, but she ends up crashing into Applejack's chest all the same. When I say stop, you stop! Applejack stumbles back a few steps, stops, and holds her with her hoof. Apple Bloom wrenches free from her hoof and steps back. She would curse at Applejack if she could, 
but she is too busy heaving for air. She sits down on her haunches and swipes her hoof through the air in what she hopes looks like a dismissive gesture. She glances around. She doesn't recognize this part of the orchard. The grass is thinner here, and the trees carry fewer apples. A wooden ladder rests sideways against a stump, and an old stone well sits, lonely, on an open patch of dirt in the shade. Applejack jabs a hoof at her. You want to get away for a little, I get that, but running off like that is not okay! Apple Bloom pushes herself up to all fours and glares at her sister. You're so unfair! Fair don't matter here. You're the younger, and that means you do as I say. Apple Bloom opens her mouth to protest, but Applejack cuts her off before she gets another word out. Gran has been getting worse, and you know that. We need to be close by when she has downswings like this. Why, so we can watch her die? Applejack narrows her eyes, but hesitates. The anger in her expression fades, and her eyes soften. She bites her lip and looks down at the barn, taking a breath before answering. <sighs> yes. Apple Bloom's eyes widen, and her chest tightens. She looks away to hide the stinging in her eyes. The last sliver of sun sets behind the western hill, and the shadow swallows the orchard. Then I'd rather go to Manhattan with my friends. No pony ever got a cutie mark from watching their granny die. She turns to walk away. Apple Bloom, you- Don't touch me! Applejack steps in front of her. Just hold on a minute. Apple Bloom turns the other way, eyes to the ground. I get that you- She turns away again. Applejack hurries in front of her again. Will you just- Apple Bloom walks past her, and once again Applejack blocks her path. Ugh, darn it, Apple Bloom, just- Ah! Apple Bloom screams and rams her chest, hearing the wind go out of her. Applejack stumbles back. A twig cracks behind her. She puts a hoof around her sister and yelps as her legs touch upon the edge of the old well. She trips, falls over, and drags Apple Bloom in with her. For a horrifying moment, the ground disappears from under them, and they plummet through open air into darkness. Rough stone scratches at Apple Bloom's back on the way down, and she splashes into shallow water in a tangle of limbs and manes and hat. Apple Bloom blinks her eyes open and groans at a dull pain in her side. It is dark, dim, but not pitch black. She must have landed on a mossy stone, a warm stone. Feels more like grass than moss. She hears a voice, muffled and distant. Applejack's voice. Her mind swims with dizziness. She shakes her head and looks down. Two green eyes stare up at her from behind a wet mane right under her face. She startles and squints down. Applejack? Apple Bloom! She winces and covers her ears. Applejack's voice echoes around them. <laughs> yeah, yeah, you don't have to yell. <sighs> Are you all right? Are you hurt? Um, I'm fine, I think. What happened? Why am I on your head? Apple Bloom blinks. She lets go of her ears, feeling a jolt of pain when she cranes her stiff neck to look up. Oh. A round brick tunnel slick with wet and covered in patches of moss, stretches up toward the grey sky high above. A rope dangles about two-thirds of the way down, well out of reach. One of the old whales. Back from the old days. They should have all been sealed up by now. She shifts her weight on Applejack's head. Ow! Watch it! Her hoof presses against Applejack's left ear, her belly resting on the top of her head. Sorry, Apple Bloom mumbles, putting her hoof against a loose brick in the wall instead. It is slippery, and her hoof cannot get a firm hold, so she lets it dangle down the side of Applejack's head. She looks down. Applejack is standing in shallow water up to her ankles. 
What do we do? Climb up? Not likely. I can't feel my hind leg. I think something's wrong with it. And this mud under the water is sucking at my hooves. I only have one I can move properly. Applejack squints up. There was a ladder up there. We'll just have to go call for Big Mac to throw it down to us. Think he'll hear us from all the way down here? Big Mac! Applejack yells, and Apple Bloom covers her ears again. Big Mac! Help! We're down here! Applejack keeps on yelling until her voice grows hoarse. She coughs between cries of help and Big Mac and even a granny or two. After what feels like a long while, she sighs and quiets down. This is all your fault, Apple Bloom mutters. What? This never would have happened if you hadn't followed me all the way out here. If you hadn't run all the way out here and pushed me, you mean? If you would just let me go to Manhattan like I was supposed to. <laughs> Are you still thinking about that now? Have you no sense, Villa? When I get out of here, I'm running away, and I'm getting on that train to Manhattan. You are not. Why do you have to be such a bad sister? Me? <laughs> a bad sister? <laughs> I'm the one trying to teach you something valuable here. Whatever. I'm climbing up. Count yourself lucky if I throw down the ladder. Apple Bloom puts one hoof on the edge of a mossy brick and hoists herself up. Her other hooves find unsteady holds on the top of Applejack's head. She sways back and forth a few times, certain she will fall over at any moment. It's a long way up. It's nothing. Apple Bloom fixes her eyes on the rope, hanging a little over halfway down. Once I've bitten hold of the rope, it'll be easy. She presses her back against the opposite side of the well, and her hooves against the other. She finds cracks between the bricks, and hoists herself up a little. Hey! She says, staying in place without Applejack's support. She puts one hoof in front of the other, and starts to climb. The stones are slippery, but the cracks between them give half-decent hoof holds. Don't fall and break your neck. Yeah, yeah. She keeps her eyes on the dangling rope, getting nearer and nearer. I got... Ah! Her hoof misses a crack and slips on the wet stone. She yelps as she falls through empty air. Ah! Ah! <laughs> Applejack grunts when she lands on top of her again. Apple Bloom nearly tumbles into the water, but Applejack pushes her back onto her head with her one free hoof. Ugh. I told you, it ain't gonna work. It's too darn slippery. And I told you I got it! Apple Bloom gets ready to climb again. Stop it, Apple Bloom! You're gonna get yourself hurt! I'm not staying in this hole with you! Applejack groans. Ugh! Why do you have to be so difficult? You're the one being difficult. Let me go! Apple Bloom puts her hooves in between bricks and begins hoisting herself up. Applejack wraps a hoof over her back and holds her to her. Let me go! I said you ain't climbing no more! Apple Bloom's hoof hits Applejack's face as she squirms. Uh, settle down, darn it! Applejack moves beneath her, holding her pressed against her back. Apple Bloom, wait, I think- <gasps> They both gasp as they sink down a little. They freeze as the ground settles beneath them. The mud. It's shifting under my hooves. What the heck does that mean? It means that if you keep squirming like that, we might sink through. Sink? Through? Apple Bloom looks down, feeling a chill. The shallow water on top of the mud reaches up to Applejack's knees now. Just stay still, will ya? No more kicking. Fine. Apple Bloom frowns and shifts her weight. But don't think this changes any- ah! She yelps as Applejack sinks another inch and her head knocks into the mossy stone. Stay still, darn it! Okay, okay! She takes a deep breath and rubs at her forehead. We'll get out! Big Mac will come looking for us soon, I reckon. He'll throw down the ladder. It'll get dark soon. Apple Bloom looks up at the gray sky through the tube. What if he hits the hay before he notices we're gone? 
Winona's on her leash, and I doubt Granny will be up and about this late. Applejack waits a moment before replying. He'll come and get us. Even if it ain't until tomorrow morning. Big Max and Earl Riser. If you don't notice we're missing now, he will at sunrise. Sunrise? I have to spend the whole night in here with you. A little sisterly time never hurt no pony. Sisterly time. No pony ever got their cutie mark in a whale. A real sister will let her sister go to Manhattan. Will you please shut it about Manhattan for just one darn minute? How about I stop talking to you altogether? Applejack takes a moment, like she's about to lash out at her, then lowers her head and sighs. <sighs> I'm tired, Apple Bloom. I'm tired of fighting. Can we just not argue right now? Fine. But when I get out of here, I'm going to Manhattan, whether you want me to or not. Apple Bloom waits for her to object. But for once, Applejack stays silent. Good! Apple Bloom settles into the warmth of her mane. Problem solved. No more arguing. Something wet hits Apple Bloom's nose. She looks up at the darkening sky. Another drop hits her eye. She blinks and rubs at it, feeling the drizzle fall in her mane. Hears it in the shallow water of the well. Great! Of course it has to rain. Hey, Apple Bloom? Hmm? Why do you want to go to Manhattan so badly? What do you care? Will you just answer the question? I'm trying to be a good sister here. Fine job you're doing at that. Is it because of Granny? She purses her lips. I can't help but think it's selfish of you not to want to be there for her. Sick as she is, I mean. How'd you feel if Big Mac or I didn't want to see you when you were sick? It's just something family does for each other. Do we have to talk about this? Frankly, we do. Frustrates me to no end that you think getting a cutie mark is more important than being with Granny when she's sick. It ain't that simple. Then what the heck is the problem? Apple Bloom stares into the mossy bricks in silence. Well? I'm scared. What's that? I'm scared, okay? Are you happy now? Laugh all you want, I don't care! She looks around for a place to run and hide but the wall presses tight around her. I can't be there with her. I don't want to be. Not when she... If she... Apple Bloom. I know, you're gonna say that I'm being stupid, that she always gets better, that she's not gonna... No. No. It's okay. I get it. I understand. I've... I've been scared like that before. You scared? When? When Mom died. Apple Bloom lowers her eyes, watches the raindrops sprinkle in the water. You don't talk about Mom much. No. I suppose not. They both stay quiet for a little while, before Applejack continues. We didn't talk much of it back when you was little or neither. Big Mac didn't take it too well. Granny, worst of all. Can't say I dealt with it any better. Applejack takes a breath. But the worst part was leading up to it. When she kept getting worse every day. Like Granny? Yeah, just like Granny. She looks up at Apple Bloom. Their eyes meet. And Applejack looks down again. Dad leaving shocked all of us. And it was hard. But knowing that Mom might not live out the day was worse. You wouldn't remember, though. You were just a little foal back then. How come you never talk about them, Mom and Dad? I don't think about them much now. I try not to. The rain pats down in their manes, runs down their coats, washes dirt from the cracks in the wall. 
but I want you to know that it's all right to be scared. Especially at a time like this. I don't want to be scared. What you are or what you get ain't important. It's how you deal with it that matters. Fear is fine, so long as you don't let it drive you to things you'll regret. Applejack lowers her head. Like it did to me. Applebloom rests her cheek on her sister's head. Applejack's mane is turning damp. What was she like? Who? Mom. Applejack hesitates. You were the one that brought her up. Applejack sighs. She was... complicated. Even back then, it was Granny who took care of us. But that didn't make it any easier when Mom started getting sick. It just felt wrong seeing her like that. She was always so energetic and alive and fun, but kept turning weaker and more miserable every day. Apple Bloom frowns, reminded of Granny lying sick in her bed. It was hard. And I couldn't take it. I stayed away. I hid. I made up excuses. Anything I could do to distance myself from the death creeping up on her. Eventually, it got so bad that I ran off to Manhattan, stayed there with some relatives. I thought I didn't care. I told myself I didn't. Promised myself that it didn't matter. But when I got the letter from Granny saying Mama passed, I huddled under my blanket and cried all night. You cried? Apple Bloom leans forward, looking down at Applejack's face. You? Applejack touches the stone wall with her free hoof. Every pony cries. And the ones who cry the least, cry the hardest. She draws her lips into a thin line. I never see her again. Never talk to her. Never get to say I was sorry. It was when I was crying under that blanket, all alone in a world that I didn't know, that I got my cutie mark. She meets Apple Bloom's eyes. Apples for my family, because that's all that ever truly mattered to me. Applejack stares back at the empty wall. And I was a fool not to see it until it was too late. You never mentioned Mom and that story before. I didn't think I'd ever need to. But now that I'm seeing you blundering into the same mistakes I did... Apple Bloom hides her face back over her head. What about Dad? Dad? <laughs> he ain't important. I'd like to know what he was like. Applejack looks up at her, squints when the rain hits her in the face. I said he don't matter. Not what I'm trying to teach you here. Stale. What was he like? Applejack stares back at the wall and sighs. Soon as he learned Mom was carrying you, he up and left without a word. I know they, but why? Applejack shrugs. I've asked myself that question more times than I can count. Mom didn't make things easy for him, and I guess one day he had enough. She shakes her head. I don't remember much about him. I was just a little filly back then, even littler than you are now. Apple Bloom leans forward. There's got to be something you remember. Applejack looks down at the water. Well, there's just this one thing. What is it? It's a stupid thing to remember when I can't even recall what it looked like. Well, are you going to tell me or not? Cream and sugar. Applejack's voice is low, like she is telling a secret. Applebloom raises an eyebrow. Cream and sugar? Applejack looks up at her, then away. He hated coffee, but he'd still drink it every day so long as he had lots of cream and sugar for it. That's weird. Why'd he drink it if he hated it? Not sure. Said it was just something he needed to do, and that the cream and sugar made it only half bad. Applejack looks down. Cream and sugar. What a stupid thing to remember. 
Do you think he'll come back? I doubt it. If he wanted to come back, I reckon he would have done it already. Back when I was a little filly, I'd dream of what I'd do if I ever saw him walking down the road to the barn. I told myself I'd hurry and make him a cup of coffee, put lots of cream and sugar in it just the way he liked, and give it to him the moment he opened the door. Applejack looks up at the weeping sky. I still think about it, truth be told. You never know. Maybe you'll get to give him that cup someday. Yeah, maybe. Applejack flashes a smile. I remember how he'd wrinkle up his face when he drank it. Always made me laugh, little as it was. Her smile fades. But back to what I was saying about Mom. There's an important lesson to my story. Applebloom rolls her eyes. Do you really have to turn everything into a lesson? No, but this one's important. I don't want you to. Bright light flashes in the murky well, and a heartbeat later, thunder cracks like the world is splitting open. Applebloom ducks down and covers her ears, feeling her chest vibrate as dust falls down from the wall. I hate thunder, she says, clenching her eyes shut as the crackling fades. A little thunder never hurt no pony, but it is sure raining hard. I'm cold. Applebloom shivers. Her whole body is soaked, her wet mane plastered against her head. She opens an eye and squints up. Dim moonlight shines through dark clouds high above, barely bright enough to see the water running down the round wall. Morning will come soon. Big Mac will get us back up. You'll see. He better. I've never been more miserable in my life, Applebloom says. Rainwater running down her face. A little rain is nothing. It can be much worse. Applejack speaks on with a lowered voice, too quiet to hear over rain splashing in water. What? When we do get out of here, you'll go see Granny, right? You'll stay home? Applejack says louder. She lifts her chin and looks up at Applebloom. Applebloom? I don't know. You don't know. Me staying home for another week ain't gonna change nothing. And the Manhattan train leaves in the morning. Applejack sighs so hard it sounds almost angry. <sighs> After everything I've told you, you still don't get it? What's there to get? Your family, Applebloom. That's what you need to get. You guys will still be here when I come back next week. Even if I spend a whole year away, you'll still be here at the orchard. Applebloom looks down, cringes back when she sees the frustration in her sister's face. I mean, it's not like you'd ever leave. Applejack keeps quiet and stares into the wall like it is something she wants to hit. More importantly... Applebloom looks down behind her shoulder. Is it just me or has the water risen? Applejack frowns at the water lapping against her thighs. Tends to happen when it rains. Yeah, but where will the water go? Up. While we're down here. Hmm. That's fine, ain't it? It can be. She squints up at the rain. We might not have time to wait for Big Mac. What do we do then? Can you climb? Applebloom looks around the cracked bricks in the bottom of the well. Applejack winces as she moves her legs a little under the water. I can't... I still can't feel my hind leg. And two of my others won't budge from the mud. Applebloom looks up the rope, hanging limp, not far out of reach. I can try climbing again. I don't think that's a good idea. Do you have a better idea, then? Sit here, underwater, until morning. I'll throw down the ladder when I'm up. Use a rope if you have trouble moving. Applejack hesitates, then sighs. <sighs> Just be careful, all right? I'm always careful. Just stay still. It'll be easy. Applebloom balances her hooves on Applejack's head and puts the tip of her forehoof into the slit between two bricks. Here. Applejack lifts her head a couple of inches and her sister with it. Thanks. 
Apple Bloom gets hold on a brick, presses herself against the wall, and squints up at the rope. She stretches out her legs against the opposite wall and grits her teeth as she presses herself hard against the wall, moving one hoof over the other like she is walking up the side of the well. It's not so far. Icy water streams down the wall and over her neck. She shudders. One painful hoist at a time, she makes her way upwards. The running water colors the well dark brown with dirt from above. She looks down. Applejack looks up at her with an expression equal parts horror and amazement. I think... Applebloom gasps, hoisting herself up on another brick. I think... Her hoof slips on a wet moss patch. She reaches out with another hoof and digs into the wall as hard as she can, but it's too slippery. Her guts tingle as her back begins sliding down against the wall, slow at first, then into a sickening plummet. She splashes down in deep water. Her mouth and nose and eyes fill with cold darkness. She flails against the murk. She can't tell which way is up. A hoof wraps under her belly and tugs at her. Her face breaks the surface, and she draws in a gasping breath, more from the shock of the cold than a need for air. I gotcha. Applejack grunts as she lifts her onto the top of her head. Applebloom wraps her hooves around her sister's forehead and presses her trembling chin into her mane. I'm sorry. It was going so well, but it got so slippery and- It's all right. Can you move your legs? Applejack says, louder now to get through the rising sound of heavy rainfall. Applebloom wiggles her legs one at a time. I think so. Good. You can swim, then. Swim? You're not going to drop me back in the water, are you? She looks down at the rising pool, now up to Applejack's shoulders. I'm not going to drop you, but I reckon the water's going to come to you, so you'll have to swim anyway. Where the heck am I supposed to swim? Up. You swim up. Are you out of your mind? She looks down at Applejack's face, sees her biting her lip. The water will carry you up as the well fills. All you have to do is stay above the surface and you'll be up in no time. Applebloom looks up through the dim tube. Thick drops plummet into the well, and streams of water run down the sides. She looks down at the edge of the water. It is up to Applejack's neck now, and shows no sign of stopping. But... what about you? I'll push you up some. But you'll swim too, right? The water's cold, so you need to keep moving your legs. If you don't use your muscles enough, it'll get harder to use them at all. But... So make sure to... But... Ample Bloom, listen to me! Just keep your darn head above the water and keep moving until you float to the surface! Apple Bloom stares down, mouth open, heart pounding in her throat. Applejack can't meet her eyes. The water rises to her chin. I'll not have you drown her well before you're even grown. You can throw down the ladder when you're up. Or go to the barn and get Big Mac. But what will you do until then? Applejack makes a pitiful attempt at a smile. Hold my breath like we do in the lake. You can hardly hold your breath for two minutes. Guess I'll have to set a new record then, don't I? You can't be serious. The forced smile fades. The water surges up underneath Applejack. I'll try climbing. The ladder when you throw it down. How will you climb with your legs all dangled up? I'll figure it out. The water reaches up to her lower lip. Applebloom feels the cold water against her hooves, dangling over the sides of Applejack's head. Just... just do as I say. There ain't no way I'm leaving you down here. You ain't got no... dark choice. Applejack struggles to keep her mouth above water. This ain't no time for arguing. Applebloom grimaces, looking up at salvation and down into the watery hell. You promise you'll climb up? Do you promise? Applejack's mouth dips beneath water. Air hisses through her nostrils. Applejack stretches her neck just enough to get her mouth above the water. Yes, yes, I promise. 
Tiny waves lap against her cheeks. Darn, but it's cold. She looks up into Apple Bloom's eyes. You, you go be a good little villain out here. Don't. The water covers her mouth again. The well becomes a waterfall, filling faster and faster. Applejack draws a deep breath through her nostrils, plunges her head under the water, and pushes Apple Bloom upwards, stretching her neck up as far as it will go. Don't you dare stop swimming! Can you? Water clashes into water, more and more flowing down the wall. It grasps up above Applejack's mouth, then her eyes, then over her nose. It reaches up Apple Bloom's legs, over her back, up to her neck. She gasps at the cold and kicks at the water by instinct, feeling herself beginning to float. Applejack disappears from under her. Apple Bloom sees her hat floating in the water beside her. Hi, Applejack! She screams, searching the water with her hooves, but Applejack is nowhere to be seen. Apple Bloom touches upon her mane under the water and plunges her head under. Dirt and leaves and straw cloud the water. She can just barely see her sister's vague outline through the murk. She points up and yells a word, bubbles rushing from her mouth. Go. Apple Bloom grimaces and kicks at the water, fighting her way up through the dark until she breaks the surface. Water falls all around her, from the wall, from the sky, surging up from underneath. She moves her numb limbs, trying to stay afloat. The water gets in her nose, in her eyes, in her mouth. She coughs and gasps and struggles as the well fills. She looks down, but there is only darkness there. The water carries her, lifts her up and up, faster and faster. The dark, moonlit clouds draw nearer, and the tunnel to the sky widens as she floats up on a tide of rising water. The well vomits her out, and she splashes down on muddy ground, (laughs) gasping like a stranded fish. Lightning flashes and thunder cracks. She lies dazed for a moment, feels the wind claw at her sore body. She forces her eyes open and blinks away the salty wet. Heavy rain falls down in puddles and leaves and mud, an endless chorus of crushing, deafening cold. The ladder rests against the tree where they left it, sideways now. She scrambles through the mud, drags it to the well. Dirty water overflows the brim of the stone well. She fumbles with the ladder and throws it in. The well swallows the wooden rungs with dreamlike slowness. It stops sinking halfway down and begins bobbing up and down. Apple Bloom leans her weight on it and forces it down along the edge of the well to leave enough room for Applejack. When two handles remain above the surface, the opposite edge hits ground deep below. She peers into the well, but can't see anything with the way the raindrops distort the water. Uh, Applejack! She means to scream, but it comes out as a cracked whimper. Applejack! Bright light flashes across the world for an instant, followed by a roar of thunder. She lets go of the ladder to cover her ears, and the ladder begins to float up again. She puts her hooves back on it and holds it down. Hey, Applejack! I got the ladder! Climb the ladder! The rain pours on as she waits. The thundering clouds flash and split. But no answer comes. Nothing but the sound of the rain. The cold touch of mud. The fresh scent of wet grass and dirt and blooming apples. Why aren't you climbing? The ladder's right here. She stares into the rippling water, watching for any signs of movement. You stupid idiot! You said you'd climb up, you promised! You liar! She kicks the stones. You liar! You liar! 
She steps away from the well and turns to see the warm light spilling out the barn windows far down the hill. Big Mac's window is dark. Granny's too. She turns back to the well, heart thundering in her ears. You can't drown, not you! She steps back again, afraid to even look. She swallows her fear, takes a deep breath, and leaps back inside the well. The cold of the water hits her like a train, and for a moment her muscles tense so hard she can't move. She forces her eyes open and peers down into the murk. Lightning flashes above, but the light hardly reaches halfway down the well. It's like there has been a fire down there, and shadowy soot reaches up the wall, growing blacker the farther down she looks. She shakes life into her limbs and begins swimming down, the water weighing heavier and heavier on her. She hardly feels the cold anymore. Her eyes dart around, but it's barely enough light to see the tip of her nose. She searches with her hooves, but there's only more water and bricks and empty darkness. She catches the faintest green shimmer of eyes. Her heart leaps in her chest. She swims faster, hoof outstretched, reaching, reaching. Clouds of dust move in the water, and the green fades to black. Dizziness swirls in her head. She can't see. Her lungs scream for air. Her body is numb from the cold, water squeezing hard against her temples. Fear takes hold. She freezes. Her legs refuse to move. She screams Applejack's name through the water, bubbles rushing out. Silence. She peers down for another heartbeat. Then she turns and swims up for the surface, eyes bulging, lungs burning. There's more lightning above, but no sound. Only a dim glow, growing brighter with each flash. She breaks through the surface and heaves for air, reaches over the edge of the well and rests her shivering chin on the wet stones. She coughs and gasps and scrambles out of the well like it's a monster trying to eat her. She falls back to the ground and crawls through the mud before collapsing. She huddles into a trembling ball and squeezes her eyes shut. Every inch of her body aches. The sky flashes and cracks. The rain pours on. She lies still in the mud, barely breathing, tears mingling with the rain. Seconds turn to minutes, and minutes to eternities. And her sister's words wash over her, over and over, like waves of scalding cold. You never truly appreciate family until... There is a tingling on her flanks, a growing warmth. She startles and blinks her eyes open. A dim-colored glow shines on the ground beside her, first red, then green, then yellow. The light fades and shadows close in around her. But in the morning twilight, she sees a mark above her thighs, three apples, each a different color. For a moment, she can only stare wide-eyed. Her lips tighten. Air wheezes through her sore throat. Laughter, sobbing, crying. Her head drops back to the mud, and her whole body shakes with something beyond joy or misery. The first hints of dawn claw through clouds in the east, and someplace far away, a train screeches its brakes.